hi guys and welcome back to ask nk so in the previous video we talked about how we you know start off by using a simple zbrush cylinder to create all these things right so all of these things we made use of a cylinder and a simple simple extremely simple plane all right so i showed you guys how you can make this by using the simple plane and i mean make the fire how you can make it by using simple plane and then we also talked about uh this how you can use sculptures pro to play with these things and you know generate very interesting stuff so the next thing now is to create uvs so uh for uvs what we are going to do is zbrush already has a plugin which is known as uv master so we're going to use that uv master and create uvs and the best time or the best way to create uvs is to make sure that your object is at sub division level zero right so right now we don't have any levels it's like the best time to actually do anything you want right so i'm going to click on this right here and i will choose how i want my uvs to be you can add direct that by simply painting around this object or you can simply tell uh, zbrush you know zbrush go do your thing and zbrush is going to go do its thing so we can start by you know going over to plugin then go over to this part where we have our z remesh uh the uv master and then we can fire up the unwrap all right but before i do that i would like to set the maps for this so i'm going to go over to uv and within this part i think this might be a little bit too much or is it too small i don't know i think i should leave it that way it is although we're not going to get so much of a close-up so I think I should leave it at one. Maybe I should leave it at two, just in case. Okay, so you can set whatever resolution you want there and simply say UV, all right? So once you uh, click on the UV, it goes ahead to do the UV and you can hit on Morph UV and you can see what the UV of this object is. It's relatively clean. ZBrush does a really good job when it comes to doing UVs like that. All right, so I'm going to also unwrap the second one and let's see what it looks like okay not so bad not so bad so i'm just going to turn this back on and let's select this other one and also do a simple unwrap and wait for it and there you go all right okay not so bad as well and finally for the tiny light uh tiny thing that we have here we can also simply did I UV this already? No, I don't think I did. So if you hold down Alt and click on any sub tool, you can select that sub tool. So I'm holding down Alt and clicking on the sub tool. I think it already has a UV because we did not do any destructive work there. So let me see what UV has. It's a simple flat object that works fine. So we can go ahead and, and work with it. All right. Now, the next thing that you would be, uh, asking is uh now we've done this can we simply render this you want to see this all right so how we can do this now or how we can walk around this is i would like so much to render this inside here but then i would also like to take this out of here before we actually talk about uh exporting this to some other app where you're going to do your um say rendering and, t and shading zbrush itself has amazing amazing things that you can use to shade okay so you can actually shade your characters or your model or whatever you've made directly here in zbrush okay and already we've actually given a skin shade so let's say we want to shade this directly here a good way to actually apply materials to your object is this okay so let's say you already have this uh piece that you've made and you want to apply a set of materials to this how you can do this is, for example, I want to give a different shade directly here. You would notice that we have an MRGB, RGB and M. This deals with material, color, and both of them, which is the mix of these two, deals with material and color. So if you want to start adding color information to this object as it stands, you need to make sure you turn this off and you turn this on. All right. So you need to make sure this is off and this is on. And by every means, try and use your standard uh, tool, right? Try and use your standard tool. So try and use your standard brush to actually do that. So now I have that there. I would go ahead and first of all, before you actually start giving color information to these things, 
first of all make sure that they are all set to white and for you to do that you need to go over to here where you have color and say fill object and now this object is filled with white i'll go over and do the same thing for this one so let me just simply turn this off and come through and make this and i'll show you why this is quite necessary right okay so now that i've done this and i have neglected to do this for the uh thread that is inside i want to show you why this is necessary if i come over here and choose a color of red i want you to notice that this changes color to red even though we haven't given a color to this it changes color to red now why this is changing is because there is no color that is assigned to it the ones that has been assigned a different color or a specific color only sticks with that color so if i come over here where i have red and i choose to start painting red over this object you would notice so if i select the uh, rgb if i start painting red you would notice that i have red directly here okay so you can see that i'm having that red uh thing going on here and it doesn't affect the entire object so it only affects the parts where i am painting this at a given point in time all right so if you want to start shading or if you want to start uh, texturing your stuff this is actually the best way to go for it i mean when you're using zbrush right you need to make sure that at least you've given it a certain color so that once you start switching colors it doesn't switch the colors because it's going to get you confused over time so now i want to mix in something else so i'm going to just simply move over and say i want to mix in this and you see i can easily come through and start mixing this directly here in zbrush okay so i can easily come through and start doing this directly here in zbrush and you might be wondering what if you hold down shift the same thing that happens when you're sculpting when you hold down shift you can still smooth out the colors right so you see i'm holding down shift and i'm just going ahead to smooth out this color information that we're having here really simple and you know very very straightforward now once i jump back from this mode you'll notice that the thread is also changing color because there is no definite color that has been assigned to this so to actually stop the thread from you know going up and down changing colors i'm going to go down to where i have a gray area so within the gray valley i'm going to select color and just simply hit fill right with rgb turned on i'm going to go there and hit fill now see what happens if i select something like um the candle for example or let's say i select uh the candle is good so if i select the candle for example and i choose a different color so i go over and choose green you see this doesn't change it doesn't change because it now has a certain color that is being assigned to it all right so for the candle i can select the base of the candle all right let me turn this off so that we can actually see the base of the candle very well and i can choose to you know paint in some sort of gray feel to this all right so just slight gray i just want to turn on symmetry so if you press x you can get your symmetry turned on i'm going to just press x to get symmetry turned on and then i will just go ahead and do this so if you're working with zbrush it is always always important that you as an individual maybe uh, if you can save up to get a tablet that would be amazing if you can if you have the buck to get a screen display that would be good but those things are quite expensive guys so it will be just cool to have a simple tablet that you can make use of you can go for the things that are quite cheap you don't necessarily need to buy a wacom tab right so you can go for something like the ug these are amazing tablets that you can use you can also go for things like huyon the xp pen you know and so on and so forth the idea is just get something you can sculpt with it might not necessarily be the most expensive in the market but as far as it works i think you should go ahead and get it 
So now I'm talking about this, I would like to show you guys something that has to do with these both colors or these two colors here. So the colors that you have here can be switched by pressing V on your keyboard. So you can store a color. Let's say I'm storing this uh, light version of the red. And now you see I'm using the gray to actually paint across my object, right? At any point in time, at any point in time, I can choose to press the V key to switch in between them, right? And if you want to sample color at any point, all you have to do is move your mouse across the surface where you want to sample and press your C key, right? So I can press the C key, sample a certain color, and paint through, right? I can sample a certain color and, you know, paint through by just holding down C on the keyboard all right and so this is about uh this stuff all right so i felt it will it would be nice if you guys have a because i know maybe not a lot of people that would be watching this video at any point in time would be a pro so i felt it would be nice for people to actually have an idea how these things uh work right the next thing which i would do is to go ahead and i guess this is the one with the low poly all right so the next thing which i would do is to go ahead and you know maybe change the light so a lot of you might not know that you can change the light or the way the position of the light is in your scene so for you to do that you need to go over to this part where you have light all right and if you turn this on you turn on a second light but at this point the light is not on the light is only showing you that it is active and you can position it all right so if i click it for the second time i now turn on the light you can see we can now have this light bouncing here if i go over back to zbrush uh, i mean directly in zbrush if i click on the light here and turn this you can see i've turned this light off but it's still active, which simply means I can position this light wherever I want in my scene. If I go ahead and click here, I can change the color of the light. And I can come back here and turn it on. Alright, just something you guys should know. If you double click on this, it takes it back. And if you double click, it brings it forward. Alright. Actually, if you click, not double click. So if you click, it takes the light backwards. So you can use it as a backlight. You can see I'm getting this uh, nice thing happening there. And if you just simply click, you can bring it forward and you can position it wherever you want on your scene. So I would like to just click this, take it backwards, make it uh, about that point. And instead of having this color, I would like to have uh, something in between, somewhere like there, maybe something like this. Something like this would be nice. I would like to add one more light, all right? And it's also worth noting that these lights are all different. You can see this light has an intensity of 0 0.3, this light has a different intensity, this light has a different intensity, and this has a different intensity. It's also worth noting that at every single point where you select these lights, that they have the ability to cast their own shadows, all right? So if I select something like this and go over to light properties, you see it can cast shadow, but then SSS is not turned on, which is for subsurface, all right? If you want to read more about this, you if you hold down the control button, you can see it says the SSS button will enable SSS render capabilities when the button is pressed, all right? So because this is going to be a wax, and wax actually deals with subsurface, it will be cool to actually have this on, all right? Now within this shadow, we can play with the intensity of the shadow how we want it to be. And we can also come through and you know play with also this light intensity for the shadows. All right. So you can go ahead and play with this and see how they work. So I'm selecting this because I actually need a blue uh, tinted light around here. And I would like to take this back a little bit. Yeah, something like that and maybe a little bit towards the purple area but i think it's a bit too purple now so maybe just about this i could take it a bit yeah something like that and for the one which is in front i like the fact that it's white 
but I wouldn't really uh, go for complete white so I'm going to just slide over to this part I think that's a little bit too much so just somewhere within this mix will be will be good all right something like this so with something like this if we go over and just confirm that uh, our external render is not turned on we have this and let's also confirm that we have SSS turned on so you can check out this by going over to the properties and over here you can turn on SSS and wax preview all right so you need to make sure you turn this on and now once you turn those two on within the render setting you'll be able to say I want SSS across my subtools so every single subtool that has that ability you're going to have subsurface go right through all of them all right and since we're doing this the way which we think it's is best I think it's uh, right about time for us to go back and change this from RGB to uh, material and now we don't want to give this rope or this thread an SSS material right we want to actually give it a very normal base material okay so I'm selecting this and I'm going all the way and saying fill object now you notice this has changed back automatically right because there was never a time where we decide where we gave that uh, material so you have to give all your objects materials so i'm going to go back to the skin shade and uh, repeat the same thing so color fill and the same thing goes for this color fill make sure you have material turned on finally i'm going to do that for this one as well all right so everybody is happy and then we can just hit bpr okay so now we have the bpr running through and you, it's, you, you will definitely notice that your render looks way better than what we had before. All right. So it looks way better than what we had before. And just before I start talking about where we're going to export this and, you know, what app we're going to use. It's also cool to explain the differences between your matte cap and, and uh, your standard materials. So your standard materials are just materials that can receive light. While your matte cap are material captures that already have lights baked inside them. So that's just the big difference, right? So that's why they don't really respond to light that much. So the big difference is just what I explained. So just in case you're wondering why does ZBrush have multiple stuff like this and nobody really uses it, this is why that uh, actually exists there. If you want to modify this, you can uh, come through and make modifications directly here. And all of these things are things that you should actually, you know, lay your hands on, you know, play with them and actually see how they work for you. Within this part where we have the SSS, you can choose by yourself to uh, suggest how much ray you would like to see that would pass through. All right. So depending on what you want, you can see how much rays you want to have. You can choose what kind of angle you want this thing to, you know, bounce from how much do you want it to blur all of these things are things that you can go ahead and you know check out and play with so it's totally dependent on what you want now now that we've looked at this i will take a brief moment to talk to you guys about something you probably have never used before in uh, zbrush and that has to do with your render filters all right so we have a couple of render filters here that you can make use of so i'm just going to dock them directly here so that you can see so these render filters are filters that you can use to manipulate how your uh, render looks like so a very good example of this render filter is this that if i go ahead and click on this one you see it says noise all right so i can use this and i can use this to increase the number of noise i want to have directly on this render at the same time i can choose to blend this with different objects that exist all right so and also let me just punch this a little bit up just a little bit all right and also at the same time you can choose to move this from one point to the other so within this part i have this button called radius and if i'm cranking this radius all the way up you can see that the radius of the noise is traveling all right 
so you can see that it's becoming way more blur so it's traveling backwards and it's becoming way more blur so i can just uh, push this just about this point to get some of this dirt around here and i would like to mask this just a little bit all right i would like to mask this just a little bit so let me just uh mask this by strength just just a tiny bit you might not necessarily see all of the changes and the depth i would going to also punch this depth a little bit more let's see i just need something that will stand out in the background so i would go ahead and do a bit more of the radius i think i should turn this a little bit up so i'm going to do that and also increase the noise all right beautiful so you can see the background now has this so if i turn this depth back actually i should turn it up all right so i'm getting more of this noise uh on the background next thing which i would do is if you come over to the second one you would notice it says blur the third one sharpen the fourth one and so on and so forth right so you can choose whatever you actually want so if i want to get uh, a red you can see i already have a red tint here i can just turn this down just a little bit down so it can blend in and i would like to throw in a little blue you know just to put it in the mix and just and just get something like that all right so like this from a very simple straight out render we have gone to get something that looks this beautiful so these are ways that you can you know play with your models and and get something really cool out of them then maybe at the end you can jump over to photoshop and say uh, you know what i want to actually play with these things in photoshop and create something way more interesting than what i have right now and in this way you can do amazing amazing and you know crazy stuff as well so i would like to know what you guys think about this the next thing which we're going to do is to move out from here and the next stop shop where we're going to go is probably keyshot or maybe maya or blender or substance okay so i think from this point onwards we're going to diversify so i'm going to go ahead and make videos for individual workflows for these uh things and how you can shade something this simple directly in those apps and i'm also going to make these files available probably i'm going to make them available i don't know right now but hopefully i'm going to make these files available so you guys would be able to pick it up and you know look at it and also play alongside with it i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button and if you're new here it would be cool for you to just simply uh hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification if you learned something from this tell me what you think about this in the comment section as well until i see you guys again with a video like this peace